Well, hello and welcome everyone. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day, a good week. Um, we have quite a few from the Chicagoland area joining us today, some from Arizona and as far as Tel Aviv, I think that was the winner in terms of location. Um, well, I'm Christy Kotek and I'm the Director of Alumni Engagement. Um, thanks again um, for joining us for our webinar today on creating a, pro a positive personal presence. This session is going to be led by Kenneth Kendall, more about him to come. Um, and I want to share that this webinar is intended to be interactive, so feel free to ask questions throughout the hour and utilize your chat box here. Um, we kindly ask that you do keep your mic muted just so everyone has a great audio experience um, throughout today's session. Um, Kendall might be asking you to, to unmute and share throughout, but outside of that, again, just uh, please keep our mics muted. Um, so now I'd like to introduce our special guest, Kenneth Kendall. Um, just Kenneth is such a positive force in this world, so it's really no surprise to me that he's an expert on personal presence. Um, Kenneth began his career as a professional actor in and around Chicago. He was a professor of theater at institutions in Colorado and Illinois for nearly a decade. After leaving academia, he served as a corporate trainer and leadership co consultant. Uh, Kenneth has been an executive consultant and trainer for Hurley White since 2018. And throughout his career, his driving passion has been helping people become great communicators and presenters. And that leads us here today. But one more thing last and not, and certainly not least, Kenneth is a Roosevelt alum. Um, he graduated, yes, graduated with an MFA in acting from Chicago, the Chicago College of Performing Arts at Roosevelt. So Kenneth, Thank you so much for joining us here today. We're really honored to have you here to talk to our community about this um, really important uh, professional but also per personal topic. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, very quick check, can everybody hear me? If you can't, please put it in the comments. Okay, I'm seeing some thumbs up, sweet. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's the kind of interaction I'm going to be asking for throughout this presentation. This is not a lecture. This is more of a conversation. Uh, so please stay actively involved. Uh, the thumbs up are actually really cool. I can see them on your, on your pictures. I've got a screen full of everybody. So I can see you. Uh, please utilize that to your best effect. And please utilize the chat function. If you haven't already put in where you're from, please do that. And if you have questions along the way, put those in there. I will try to answer them as much as I can. If you have a comment, if you desperately want to add something, put in there, hey, Kenny, can I, can I talk for a second? Absolutely. That's what this is really about. Uh, I want to make sure that you're getting some value out of our time together, that we're going to have some fun, and uh, hopefully we'll learn a little bit about each other. So again, thank you for joining. I know that life is crazy right now. Um, so I'm in Springfield, Illinois, which I know we all went to school in the Chicagoland area. So I'm downstate. That is how most people know where I live. There's Chicago, and then there's downstate. So I live in that downstate. I am three blocks away from cornfields, uh, and I'm 15 blocks away from the state capitol building. It's a weird dichotomy, but that's where I live. It's awesome. And I live on the one hill in Springfield. We have one, and I live on it. Winters are fun. So as Christy mentioned, I've been kind of everywhere professionally. Um, I started off as an actor in Chicago and a professor and in the corporate world, but my passion really has always been helping people communicate better. And that involves dealing with your personal presence. So let me ask you this just as a, a starting point for a conversation. And again, feel free to put this in the chat or if you wanna unmute. What is personal presence? What do you think? I see fingers feverishly typing. The way people see you, that's a great place to start, absolutely. What else do you think? Authenticity, nice, very nice, yeah. That's good personal presence. Yeah. A part of it is attire. Cammy, you're absolutely right. Yes. Wait, one or two more. Rapport, that's a huge part of it. Yes. 
It's a smart group. Do you guys go to Roosevelt or Robert Morris? I'm impressed. All right, approachability, yes. Woo, the way you connect with your audience. Very nice. You all are knocking it out of the park. All right, so yes, self-awareness, yes. The way that you carry yourself, your demeanor, man, these are amazing. Nice job, nice job, yes. Energy, yes, energy, I love it. So yes, all of this is a part of personal presence. Personal presence is extremely difficult to define because it encompasses so much of who you are. But some of the main points, here, here's what I want you to realize before we dive into what it absolutely is. In terms of how much effect it has on you in the world and how other people see you, between 11 milliseconds and five minutes, people have judged you on your personal presence, whether they're going to like you, whether they're going to trust you, whether they're going to talk about you, whether they think that you're shifty, whether they think that you're trustworthy, 11 milliseconds to five minutes. And those impressions can last a very long time, days, months, years. You have those first impressions of people that have stuck with you. So this is where personal presence is exceedingly important because it sets the standard and it sets the boundaries for where a relationship is going to head. So what we're going to be talking about today is how to make more of a positive personal presence. So personal presence is the energy that you bring with you. It is the outward show of your inner authentic self. That is what personal presence is. It is that energy that you carry with you. The people can sense. And yes, attire is part of it. Being honest is part of it. Being authentic is part of it. How you treat people is part of it. How you talk about yourself, how you talk to other people, all of that is a part of personal presence. It's exceedingly important. And especially now, because we have these video connections, personal presence can be read over these screens. And one of the things that Christy is going to be sending you after this, I've got a little cheat sheet that I created uh, called Five Tips for Being Awesome on Video Calls. And it has to do a lot with how do you get your actual real personal presence across on Zoom or Teams meeting or Google Meets, whatever you're on. So look for that and that's coming your way. Good. Oh, and more. Yes, how others see you. Absolutely. This is all a part of it. So the kind we're going to be focusing on today is this positive presence, but it has to do with being confident and being at ease with who you are. Today is not about how to create a personal presence that is not you. We don't want to use personal presence to trick anyone, uh, to not be our authentic selves. So today is about learning how to be more confident, learning how to be at ease with yourself, and being someone that is approachable. That is the whole point of today. It's being the best version of you, the authentic you. At no point do I want you to think this is a way that you can lie and cheat your way into the world. That's not what we're going for. So we're going to keep it positive. Sound good so far? All right, cool. Throw the thumbs up. So then let's start with step number one. Uh, and by the way, there really are no slides for this. This is a conversation. Okay, let's just keep it going like this. So step number one, I want you to start to become aware of your self-talk. Self-talk is part of personal presence? What? Yes, your self-talk. So that conversation that is going on in your brain that is about you, it's that internal dialogue. So little facts for you. Our brain can process up to about 750 words per minute. Okay, 750. When we speak normally, and it can vary from reason to reason, but we speak at about 140 to 150 words per minute. So our brains are taking in 150 words per minute when we're listening or when we're speaking. That leaves an extra 600 words per minute that our brain is processing. And those 600 words is our self-talk. It's our internal dialogue. So sometimes we are using that internal dialogue to, to think about what that other person is saying if we're listening to them, okay? But if we're by ourselves, and even sometimes when someone else is talking, that talk, 
that self-talk is about us. And we are either doing one of two things. We are either building ourselves up with our self-talk or we are tearing ourselves down with our self-talk. So I want you to take a quick second here. It's another part of the interaction. I want you to think, do you think that your self-talk is mainly positive, mainly negative, or a mix of both? What do you think? Yeah, I'm seeing, yeah, a lot of mix, mix, mix. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Definitely negative, mix, def, okay, yeah, absolutely. And this is different for everybody, so I'm not trying to prove a point here. I'm just, this has to do a lot with self-reflection. Yeah, and some of us, we find that we skew more negative for whatever reason. Some of us skew more positive for whatever reason, and sometimes it depends on the situation. It just depends, okay? But I want you to realize that this self-talk, this extra 600 words per minute, is the most powerful voice in our lives because it is always there. It is more powerful than what anyone else can say to you. This voice is constant and it's running at upwards of 600 words a minute. So it's either building you up or it's tearing you down. So this is where we start with a positive personal presence. Okay. So let's move on here. So I want you to become aware of this, which is what you're, what we're already starting to talk about here. Your homework, this is a big piece of your homework, is start to pay attention to when your self-talk goes positive. What's the situation around you? What are you feeling? You know, who is around you? Is it a particular location that you are in? Is there, are there certain places that just make you super happy and confident? Um, and then also pay attention to when your self-talk turns negative. Again, what is going on around you? Who is around you? Is it a certain geographic location? Start to pay attention to when you go positive and when you go negative. Now here's the trick. And this is actually something that I learned from one of my professors at Roosevelt, uh, Professor Adrian Danzig, who was my clowning professor. Yes, I took a class on juggling, don't judge me. But when you are learning about yourself, Learn this phrase, go, huh, that's interesting, and then move on. When you go negative, you don't need to say, stop it, idiot, why are you going negative? That doesn't help anybody. Just go, huh, that's interesting. I wonder why I'm going negative right now. And the same thing with, with your going positive. Go, huh, that's interesting. I wonder why I'm in a positive self-talk place right now. Start to notice and start to take stock, but don't judge yourself. That doesn't help anybody one little bit. And then you do that weird head thing and people will think you're crazy. So don't do that. So that is your homework. Start to figure out when you go positive and when you go negative. So that's step one. Step two, and this may be a new one for you guys. I hope it's not because I think this is really important, but I want you to start examining your mindset in terms of are you in a fixed mindset or are you in a growth mindset? Thumbs up, has anybody ever heard of this idea before? This is put forth by Carol Dweck, fixed versus growth mindset. Okay, I'm seeing a couple thumbs. Sweet, yes, TED Talk, absolutely, Christy, yes. Yes, Elizabeth, absolutely, awesome, I'm glad you're teaching this. Okay, and if you're not sure, if you've never heard of it, that's okay. That's why we come on to these things, because we are lifelong learners, Lakers. That's what we do. So here, here's the basic idea. Um, and if you're interested in this stuff, the book you want to look at is called Mindset, and it is by Carol Dweck. I'm going to write this in the comments uh, so everybody can see it. So it's called Mindset by Carol Dweck. PhD. Fascinating book. It talks about all the science behind this. So it, her theory, her, her proposition is that we are either in a fixed mindset or we are in a growth mindset. So what these mean, let's start with a fixed mindset. Fixed mindset is that we are born 
with a certain amount of brains, with a certain amount of talent, and with a certain amount of skills. And that is where it is, and it's never going to get better. You are what you are, period. You cannot improve. So a fixed mindset, when you're thinking about self-talk, might sound something like this. I made a mistake, and that is bad. I, I, I don't make mistakes. I'm obviously not good at this. Uh, when someone criticizes you, you take it as a personal attack. When you say things like, ah, I guess I'll just never learn this. That's fine. I'll just, it's fine. I, I'll just never learn. Um, I'm either good at it or I'm not. And if I'm not good at it today, that means I'm never going to be good at it. So I don't even need to try anymore because I was born not being good at this. Uh, I'm just not smart. That is a fixed mindset. You are limiting yourself by saying that I am as good as I will ever be and nothing that I can do will make me change. So that's a fixed mindset. It's very limiting. And I think if there's one thing as humans that we should all be able to agree on is that we can grow and change. I mean, we are all educated folks. That's we're, we're lifelong Lakers. We're RU alum. Uh, someone asked a question, if they meant it as an attack. T, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Could you elaborate it for a teeny second? Because I'm interested now. If not, I think you're typing. So we'll keep going up. T, I want to come back to that. So if you could elaborate... Um, and we'll come back to that. So that is a fixed mindset. I am what I am. So the opposite of that fixed mindset is called a growth mindset. So it is, it is assumed that we are all born with special, with, with certain abilities and talents that are kind of ingrained in us. And we can learn everything else. We do not have limits. Our brains and our talents are just a starting point. We jump off from there. Yes, we are going to be more inclined towards certain activities. That, that's part of being human. But if we want to, if we want to put in the time and practice, we can do anything we want. Yeah. So what this might sound like in terms of self-talk, okay, is something like, I can learn to do this. I may not be good today, but if I practice, I can get better. Okay? I'm not good at this today. I can get better. Challenges help me grow. Constructive criticism is a positive and I can learn from it. Just because I'm not perfect today doesn't mean I can't get better tomorrow. Uh, I like to try new things. When other, this is a big one, when other people succeed, that's inspiring that I can do something great too. So other success inspires me. Uh, and this last one, this is something I work with my kids on a lot. My effort and my attitude determine my abilities. My effort and my attitude determine my abilities. So that is a growth mindset. This points us towards education. This points us towards improvement. This points us towards learning, towards trying new things, towards seeking out challenges and pushing ourselves to do more. So what I'm encouraging you to do as you look at a positive personal presence is start to figure out where in your life are you in a fixed mindset? Because no matter how we try, there are going to be certain things that we probably have a fixed mindset around. And again, notice those and go, huh, that's interesting. I wonder why I don't think I can get better at this. Is, is that true? I don't know. And then start to notice the things that you're in a growth mindset about. Uh, and both of those present great opportunities. All right, so let's go back to the comments here. Uh, so T, when they criticize. Ah, okay. I see what you mean. So let, let me clarify my remark. Thank you for pointing that out, T. Yes, if someone is criticizing you, not to be constructive, but to be hurtful, well, that's just BS and dismiss what they're talking about. That shouldn't, shouldn't affect how you feel about yourself. Because let's face it, some people just stink. <laughs> they are afraid of you succeeding. Uh, maybe they're having a bad day. 
You know, when someone is criticizing you, it, it very seldom has anything to do with you. You've probably heard this, you've probably heard this before. Um, we lash out when we're having a bad day. It usually has not a whole lot to do with you. Um, so T, yeah, you're welcome for clarifying. What I'm talking about is constructive criticism. Uh, for example, let me, let me throw out a hypothetical here. So let's say you're on a team of some sorts, whether this be in business or a sports team or whatever. And uh, the coach comes up to you after you know, an event and says, hey, you did a good job. Uh, here are some things you can improve on. Here are some things I want you to work on so you can be better. A fixed mindset's gonna go, nope, this is as good as I'm gonna get and how dare you suggest that I wasn't perfect. And the growth mindset is gonna be like, oh cool, I, I, I have some more work to do and I can get better. That's awesome. So that's really the difference. Yeah, if someone's just criticizing you, just itch, heck with you, man. Yeah. Uh, and yes, uh, Kelly, I agree. Sometimes we are afraid to give some, somebody a compliment. Uh, and this is actually something I wanna talk about a little bit later, but we'll address it now. One of the things about being, being a positive force in the world and having a positive personal presence is giving compliments and meaning them genuinely. Uh, and kind of the rule of thumb is, you know, praise in public and uh, criticize in private. That's a big thing. Uh, and there's a, there's a coaching, so I'm, I'm a public speaking coach uh, as well. One of the things that uh, if you are in a position where you coach people, where you are able to give feedback, so maybe you're a parent, maybe you're a manager, maybe you're a leader, there is a tendency that when we want to give bad feedback, when we want to be super critical, we tend to kind of use the Oreo cookie approach. We go, compliment, you're doing this thing great. And then here's this thing that I really need you to work on because you stink at it. Oh, and by the way, here's this other thing you're really great at. And it becomes the habit of someone who's listening. You pay them a compliment and they're like, and where's the thing I suck at? And so they don't listen to the compliment anymore. They're like, yeah, okay, great. Just get to the bad stuff, okay? You obviously don't mean the compliment because you're just going to get the bad stuff. So get in the habit of just complimenting people. And you're right. Some people just won't take a compliment. It's true. That's not your responsibility to fix that. Your job is to give compliments and mean them and then move on with your life because the only thing you can control is you. Yeah. Opportunities. Absolutely. Yes. So yes, Lisa, you're absolutely right. Using the word opportunities instead of things you suck at. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes, it is an opportunity. Areas of improvement, opportunities. Yep. So when we're talking about the self-talk and this growth mindset, moving yourself from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset is going to improve your self-talk gradually. It, it takes some time, but once you get there, it is going to have a drastic impact on your presence because suddenly you have a cheerleader in your mind. You are taking some burdens off of yourself that don't need to be there. You are in a much more positive headspace. So the energy you're putting out in the world, the persona that you're putting out in the world is going to be that much better because you have started to be positive with yourself. You are giving yourself grace. You are being kind to yourself. All the things that we tell other people to do, you'll finally be doing it for yourself. And that is exceedingly important. So how you change this is pay attention to your self-talk, notice where you're fixed. And then when you get to a moment where you're in a fixed mindset, stop yourself. You can even uh, say it. And uh, yes, uh, B. Gibson, it does have some roots in Norman Vincent Peale. But when you feel something fixed in your mindset, just say, stop. You can even say it out loud. I've done this. You're talking to yourself like, D -d -d stop. I am not fixed there. I have an opportunity to grow. Stop telling yourself you're as good as you're gonna get. And then start to rethink, ask yourself, how can I put this in more positive light? I have an opportunity to learn here. So that is what I'm asking you to do. Start to believe in the positive things about yourself and move it over to that positive growth mindset. And yes, Lisa, thoughts are words unspoken, absolutely. These are great. Good, guys. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I wanted to tell you a quick story about this, just so you can get an idea of how powerful this is. So as I mentioned, I'm a public speaking coach. 
Um, and one of my clients recently, we shall call him Stephen, uh, because his name is Stephen, and that's all you need to know. But he he's in the insurance industry, and he recently got a new job uh, in sales, and he has to, for the first time in his life, cold call people. And I don't know if you've ever had to cold call people. It is a unique situation. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, and he was terrified, absolutely terrified. Uh, he thought that selling was scary. He'd never had to sell before. He thought that uh, when he called people, he was just being an inconvenience. Uh, he thought that people would hate him uh, and that he, uh, he didn't want to take criticism about his calls. He did not want to hear what he was doing wrong. He didn't want to hear about it. Um, so yes, it, it can be an awkward situation. It absolutely is. So he called me and we were old friends and we started talking about this. Um, and it turned out, we, we talked about this idea of a fixed versus growth mindset and he was stuck in this fixed mindset. And he flat out said, he said, Kenny, I, I can't sell anything. I am not a born salesperson. I'm not a salesperson. And I went, aha, <laughs> how long have you been telling yourself that? He's like about 25 years. <laughs> That's a lot of time spent convincing yourself that you have no skills in this. And this is what he was telling himself before every call. He would pick up the phone and as he was dialing, goes, this is going to suck. This is going to suck. This is going to suck. And it did. And we started to work on this and he read Carol Dweck's book and we started to put this into practice and we changed his self-talk. And within a month, and I, I kid you not, it was almost to the day we worked on this for about a month. We improved, we put in some mantras into his life and he started this positive self-talk path and he landed on his month anniversary, three huge clients. And then he just started to get on a roll there, but it was, and the only thing we changed was the self-talk and everything else kind of followed with that. His pitch was fine but it was the self-talk and he started saying to himself, I can sell, I'm going to add value to their lives. I'm calling them to build a relationship, like all these things. And he had a huge change in his life and he is now one of their top salesmen. So it's amazing to see when you change your self-talk, how this changes everything else. Now, I'm not saying all of you should go out and do cold calling for a living uh, because it's not for everyone. It can be if you want it to be, but it's not for everyone. Uh, but that is the power of that positive self-talk. And you can imagine how we showed up on the phone because of that. All right. So any questions on this idea of kind of rewiring your self-talk? We've had some really good comments. But any questions before we move on to our second part here? I'm going to take a quick drink of coffee. This is one of the, the best things that has come out of quarantine for me. I have learned how to make whipped Dalgona coffee. And it's tasty. Yes, thank you. And like Margaret has had some of this. Yeah. And yes, Lisa, I agree. Positive affirmations work. They do. Ton of research about this. Go check it out. All right. So let's move on to step two. So after we have started to work on our own brain and moving ourselves into a positive presence where we start to feel good about ourselves and we're not stuck in a fixed mindset is we want to start to work on the outer conversation that we are having with the world. And this is our body language. Uh, we are not going to talk about dress code today. We're not going to talk about what you wear because it changes, but I want to talk about body language. Okay. This body language is what we use to communicate non-verbally our feelings and our intentions and your body language affects your self-esteem, it affects your confidence, and it affects your emotions. Here's the fun thing, and this has been proven again and again and again. It is not your emotions that impact your body language. It is your body language that impacts your emotions. Let that sink in for a second. It is your body that impacts your emotions. What you are doing with your body changes your emotions and changes what you're thinking. It has an impact on that. Anybody here ever heard of the, uh, the secret smile? So there was a study done. Yes, cool. There was a study done uh, with some monks. 
I believe it was in Tibet. Um, what they what they tested was if these monks were having a bad day, if they're in a bad mood or whatever, they would just smile. They didn't have to believe it, but they had to engage their muscles. They just had to smile for about five minutes. And what they noticed, they did brain scans of these folks, is once they started smiling, they didn't change anything else, suddenly their mood changed and they became happy, happier. And this has proven true time and time and time again. What you do with your body affects your emotions. If you've had, uh, yes, you can't smile and laugh behind your mask, yes. Um, if anybody here has ever had kids, or you've been around little ones, I've got a seven-year-old and a three-year-old, my, my adopted kiddos. Um, if you've ever been around them when they're first learning to walk, when they start to walk and they start to fall down those first couple of times, they don't cry. They hit the ground and they look at a parent because they don't know how to react to it. They don't have an emotion linked with this activity. They hit the ground, boom, and the brain goes, we hit the ground. What am I supposed to feel about this? And they look to an adult. And if the adult freaks out, like, oh my God, you fell into it. Kid's gonna freak out. They're like, oh, this physical impact, that's not good. So when this happens, I'm gonna have this emotion about it. If the parents don't freak out, they're like, oh, you fell, good job, stand up. Kid doesn't even think it's a big deal. This is the association that we make. What happens physically, the emotions fill in, but you have to have the physicality first. I know it's strange to think about. There's another saying, we don't laugh because we are happy. We are happy because we laugh. And it's true. If you're ever in a bad mood, force yourself to laugh for a little bit and suddenly life is good again. If you're in a bad mood, stand up and dance. I love doing that. Stand up and dance, woo! It gets you in a good mood. Also people think you're crazy and they leave you alone. But this has an impact. So how we communicate with our body language has an impact on our, on our brain and on the presence we're putting into the world. So I wanna talk about some things not to do with your body language because this negatively impacts what's going on with your brain and it negatively impacts the presence that you're putting out there. So, number one, please don't stare at people. It's creepy. Remember to blink. But don't do that. Don't stare at people. That's just a good rule of thumb, okay? Um, this next one, let me adjust my camera just so you can see what I'm doing here. And is crossing your arms. Now, if you are crossing your arms for comfort, or if you're crossing your arms because you're cold, totally fine and totally different. But if you are crossing your arms, this is telling your brain to not listen and that you are angry and not open to new ideas. Even if you are open to new ideas, this body language is telling your brain, don't listen, don't listen, don't do it. Crossing your arms like this. That also sends a powerful signal to the person you're talking with that, ooh, wow, yeah, they're not with me on this and they're probably bad. So be mindful of crossing your arms when it's in a defensive posture. Um, crossing your legs, same thing. If it's for comfort or if it's for modesty or you're cold, totally fine. But if you ever see someone cross their arms and cross their legs at you and kind of lower their gaze a little bit, they're done with you. They are done with you. And when you do that for yourself, you are done with them. Your brain is gone at that point. Your body has said, I'm done listening, I'm done. So be mindful of that, okay? Um, if you are talking with someone and instead of facing them, your body's just kind of off to the side here, this is telling your brain, can we go now, please? I'm not listening. Can, can we go, please? And it's telling the other person that, oh, they're actually trying to leave the conversation. Wow, that's a little rude. I'm not sure I want that. Uh, yes, Laura, absolutely. Being open to those outside the group. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you have poor posture when you're talking with someone, uh, if you look at the floor, that shows a lack of confidence. And it tells your brain, we're not confident right now. And it's weird. It, it happens. It changes what you're thinking at that moment. 
Um, so I want you to think about this. If you have, if you find yourself looking at the floor a lot, or you're like just kind of avoiding that, you have a right to take up space as much as anyone else in this world. You do, okay? Um, if you are leaning away from a conversation, again, that shows that you're disinterested and you want to leave. So be mindful of that. Um, if you are putting your hands in your pockets, again, if you're not cold, that uh, if you're putting your hands in your pockets, that usually means that you are distrustful or that you're nervous, like you're hiding something. And if you're fidgeting with your hands, again, not like if there's something wrong with your hands or if there's a good reason, but if you just naturally fidget, that tells someone that you have insecurity or that you have a lack of clarity of thought. So again, just be mindful of these things. I'm not telling you to never do them. Just be mindful. Make sure that you are sending the messages both to the other person and to your brain that you want them to send. Okay. And yes, do not be stiff. Absolutely. Don't be held. Yeah. So let's talk about some good things to do that are going to invite people to want to come and be with you. That's very positive. Okay. So number one, make eye contact. Not creepily, but make eye contact. You know, remember to blink. Talk with people, especially like on Zoom calls. Look at the camera like you are actually talking with that person. The camera are the eyes of the other person. So make eye contact. Okay. Lean forward a little bit. Lean into the conversation. Because when you are physically leaning in, that also tells your brain, ooh, let's get more interested in this. Let's really listen. So lean into that conversation. Uh, have good posture. Stand up straight. Put your shoulders back. That is confidence. Um, and what is interesting about this, when you have confidence, when, you, when you're standing up straight and when you are open, when you are facing people and you're open, you're not hiding yourself or anything like that, why this is confident is you have opened the most vulnerable part of your body to the world, your abdomen and your groin. Those are your two most vulnerable parts of your body. And when you are not covering them up with your hands or you're not guarding them, that shows the world that I'm confident. Whatever, I don't need to hide. I am here and I am taking up my space. Deal with that. That's a huge confidence boost. And if you stand like that for a little while, your confidence goes up just because you're standing like that. So have fun with that. Uh, keep your chin up. Look forward when you're walking. Don't look down. Look forward and look people in the eye. Try to keep your hands out of your pockets. I just sounded very Chicago there, didn't I? Pockets. Um, this is another big one, and I, I found this one to be very true. Slow down. Slow your movements down a little bit. Confidence is about controlling and not having to do anything unnecessary. So slow down, unless you're walking on the sidewalk in Chicago, and then seriously, keep up. But be confident and calm it down, slow it down just a little bit. It's okay, take your time. Um, when you're talking with someone, be straight on with them, or if you're in a group, be open to everybody. And smile. Not like if, if you've seen Hamilton, which I really hope you have, uh, Aaron Burr, his, his advice to Hamilton is smile more, talk less. That's not what I'm saying. You have a right to speak just as much as anyone else. But if you smile, that's going to make you a little bit more positive. Speak just as much as you want to. I don't care. But smile. People love smiling. Oh, Aaron Burr. Yes. Good. Okay. So here's another part of your homework. It's actually a two-parter. So number one, start to pay attention to your body language. Are you sending out the information that you want the world to know about you? Do you want to appear confident? Do you want to appear at ease? Do you want to appear shy? Do you want to appear sad? Like, What do you want the world to know about you? And then let your body do that. And if your brain is somewhere where you don't want it to be, if you've got some emotional stuff going on, change your body language. And then that will change what's going on in your inner life. So that's step, that's part one of your homework. Part two is I want you to pay attention to what makes you feel confident when you do it with your body. 
are there particular stances? You know, like when I, I know when I stand up and my left foot is slightly ahead of my right, I don't know why, but that makes me feel super confident. Um, I know there are certain clothes that I have that make me feel confident. Uh, I know when I, you know, shave in the morning, I feel confident. So start to notice those things that make you feel confident and at ease with yourself and then do those things on purpose. Because if you feel confident, if you feel positive, people are going to pick that up from you. And that's really what we're talking about. Make some sense? Okay. So let me throw out another story here because this one blew me away when it happened. So, and, and the reason this blew me away, in, as an actor, I am trained in body language. This is like, this is the bread and butter of what we do. So I was, I was working with a client um, who's in the healthcare industry. She works in benefits. Uh, not that you need to know that, but I like backstory. So um, super positive, super bubbly, exceedingly intelligent, very funny woman. Uh, Mid forties, you know, had been in, had been in healthcare all her life. Loved it. Loved what she does. Loved the people she works with. Had a crippling fear of public speaking, and she couldn't figure it out. Uh, and she she came to me, and we were talking about it. And I asked her to just give, you know, in, introduce yourself to me as if we'd never met before. Uh, and she got up, and as she's usually just very upbeat, and her body language is great. And as she was walking up in front of a conference room with no one else in it, just me, her shoulders slouched. She slowed down. She started to guard herself, and she looked at the floor. And then she said, you know. Hi, my name is, name, and, and I work in benefits here at the clinic, uh, and I, I, I don't like speaking in front of people. And then she sat back down, and I said, let, let, let's call her Claire. Let's just call her Claire, okay? That's not her name. And uh, yes, Amy Cuddy, by the way. So I said, Claire, do, how, how did you feel up there? She goes, I... I just, I, I didn't feel anything. I just, I, I wanted to, to escape. I wanted to, and I don't know why. I don't know why. I said, do you know what you're doing with your body? Because I, I was standing up there. I said, no, 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 no. Here's exactly what you were doing. You were doing this, you were looking down. She goes, I was doing that? I said, yeah. She goes, I had no idea. I said, let's try this. So I just, I asked her to go back up in front of this conference room and I just asked her to stand up straight. I asked her to fix her shoulders. I said, look straight ahead at the back of the wall. Don't even look at me for right now. Just look at the back of the wall and say it again. And she went, hi, my, my name is Claire and I, I work in benefits and healthcare. And, and all of a sudden she just started talking and she told me her entire story. And she went on and on and on. And I learned about her kids and her dog and the farm she lives on. And she, at the end she stopped. She goes, what just happened? I said, you got out of your own way. Your body was telling you that you needed to be scared. And when we fixed your body, you didn't need to be scared anymore. She said, I, I, I don't understand, but I like it. <laughs> and this didn't fix all of her fears. We found out some other deep seated stuff that had to do with her mom and being perfect and the, the color of her mom's dishes, which was a weird story. Um, but now she's actually giving the benefits presentations because she likes it. And she started telling jokes. This was a huge step forward for her. She started telling jokes in her presentation. Um, and all we did was we made her aware of and fixed her body language. And then everything else followed. It fixed everything else. So this is truly powerful. Uh, and yes, Angelique, you put in there, uh, Amy Cuddy. Yes, she has a TED Talk about power poses. 100%. Go check that out. Amy Cuddy in TED Talks. And she's got a great book that just came out about that too. Go check that out. C-U-D-D-Y, Amy Cuddy. Good. All right, so any questions about body language? Awesome. Okay. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Um, so because we're starting to run a little short on time, I want to get into your speaking, your speaking voice and a little bit of public speaking. Okay, because this is really my bread and butter just as a speaking coach. Um, but I want to give you some practical tips that you can use. So let's talk about your speaking voice. I'm not going to ask this question, but I want, I, I don't want an answer. So I'm going to ask the question. 
How many of you are in love with your voice? Just think about that. Do you love your speaking voice? Or do you like part of it and wish it could be different? And it may be a mix, I don't know. Do not be ashamed of your voice. Your voice is a result of the life that you have lived. It is your musculature, which you didn't get to choose. It is the muscles in your body, which you didn't get to choose. It is the size of your throat, which you didn't get to choose. It is the most expressive part of our body. You didn't get to choose this, but be proud. This is what makes you an individual. And it is exceedingly powerful. Uh, my son, so he is seven and a half now. I won't say seven because he will correct me. He is seven and a half. Um, a couple years ago. So look, my wife is a singer and so am I. Um, so we've been teaching him about singing since he was pretty young. And we were learning about animal sounds a couple years ago. And just, you know, what is the cow saying? What is all this? And he likes sounds. And one day he said, you know, I think I like the human voice because it has the sounds of all the other animals in it. He said, it, it has everything and we can do anything with it. Like, ding, that's amazing. Wow. And it's true. We have an exceedingly expressive instrument. So we need to be proud of what we have. We're all, we, we, and we don't sound the same. We're not gonna sound like anybody else. So embrace who you are in terms of your voice. Yeah, and it blew my mind. I'm like, you're five. You're five and you came up with that. You're amazing. Um, so let's talk about how you can make sure that you are using your voice to the best effect because most of us don't. We are, you, we are only using a small range of what is possible. So number one, slow down. If you're from the coast, if you're from a part of the country that speaks quickly, slow down. That is how you get more out of your voice. So step one, slow down, okay? Speaking quickly is a bad habit. People have to really work to listen to you. Slow down, okay? But also, don't speak too slowly because that is annoying. Find a good pace, 140, 150 words a minute, which is kind of what I've been speaking at today. So number one, slow down. Number two, enunciate. Work on your crisp sounds, your T's, your D's, your P, your K. Spit them out, okay? I grew up in Utah where we did not care for final consonants on words. We did not care for them at all. So some of you may drive a vehicle called a Jeep. There's a P on the end of that word, yeah? In Utah, you drove a Jeep. Uh, we also, in, in the middle of words, we like to drop the T's and the D's. So we lived in the Wasatch Mountains. It irks me. So enunciate. The consonants, which are those hard words, represent thought. In, in language. The vowel sounds represent emotion. So hit those consonants when you want to break up thought. And it's not thought, it's thought. We went to Roosevelt University or Robert Morris, not Robert Morris, Robert Morris. There's a T in there, use it. So enunciate, okay? Uh, number three, vary your pitch. In America, and Maury, you probably have some insights into this. We tend to speak right in the middle of our range and we don't wanna to vary too much from that. If you travel abroad, uh, if you go to England, if you go to Italy, if you go basically any other country, people tend to go higher in their voice and lower in their voice than we do here in the States. For some odd reason, we, we think that's weird here, but you can use it to affect. So explore the top range of your voice and explore the bottom range of your voice and everything in between. So figure out where you speak and then start to expand that. Do vocal warm-ups. Take a singing class. I've got some recommendations. Some good folks works at Roosevelt. 
So vary your pitch. And you're more interesting to listen to when you do that. You get monotonous and that's no fun, okay? Uh, you can also do vocal warm-ups to help warm yourself up. So I like some lip trills, you know, it's a brrrr. That's always fun, go as high up and as high down. Brrrr. Warm those up, do some tongue trills. Arrrr. You know, get those things out there. Give your jaw a massage, do tongue twisters. My favorite tongue twister, and you know, you, you don't have to repeat this one because it's not safe for work if you mess it up, okay? But as I am a mother pheasant plucker, I pluck mother pheasants. I am the most pleasant mother pheasant plucker that ever plucked a mother pheasant. So you want to practice that slowly and at home, and then you can take it to work. But you got to pay attention and pay attention to what's coming out of your mouth, okay? So the, thank you, thank you for the applause. I appreciate that. <laughs> I've got another one that's a little worse, but it's really not safe for work. Okay, so love your voice and work on it. If you want more variety out of your voice, if you want more expressiveness, work on it. Again, it's that growth mindset. Don't just say, this is my voice and that's it. It's not. You have more variety in your voice, but you have to work at it. Okay. The last thing that we're going to work on here is talking about public speaking. Now, when I say public speaking, it is any time you have an audience. That does not mean you're up giving a formal lecture in front of an audience or a classroom. Public speaking is now a Zoom call, okay? Anytime you have an audience, it is public speaking. So a couple of things that I want you to pay attention to, and these are, if you can master these, man, you'll be amazing. So number one is pace, slow down. We've already talked about this. Number two, project. Make sure that you are supporting your voice with your abdominal muscles. Don't speak from your throat. It kind of sounds like this. You don't want that. If you have problems with this, give me a call. We'll talk. Take pauses. This is number three. Take pauses. When you pause, it gives people time to think. Kind of like that. Give people a minute to think and to catch up, okay? When you ask a question in a public speech, actually ask it. So a question goes up at the end. What does a question sound like? It sounds like that. So here's the trick though. When you ask a question, then take a pause and let the audience actually answer it for you. Even if it's rhetorical. Because in that pause, thinking happens. And that's what you want. You want your audience to think. So ask a question, make it go up at the end, and then give them a minute to think. And the last one is be authentic. You giving a speech should be the same you that I can meet at the coffee shop. That should be the same you that I meet on a bus. It should not be a persona that you're putting on. It should be you a teeny bit louder version of you because it's a bigger audience, but it should be you. Um, another story here, cause we're just about done. So uh, a teammate of mine who actually turned into a client, um, he, he got a job when he joined my team as a trainer, corporate trainer, facilitator. He had a background in biochemistry. He had never been a trainer before in his life, but the kid was passionate and he knew his stuff. Uh, very, very intelligent. When he would get in front of a class, he would put on a persona. And this persona was extremely stiff. Uh, it was unapproachable. It wasn't funny, which he was very funny. Um, and it was kind of a know-it-all persona, which was not him at all. And I, I asked him to give me a speech one day, and he led a lecture. And I said, great, okay. Who, who, who are you? He said, I'm Will. I said, okay, who was that? Is what he mean? Because that wasn't you. That wasn't, you created a different person to give that speech because you thought it would be better. And we cut, we, he started to talk about this persona and there was some fear behind it that he didn't want to seem like he was an imposter, but he put on this whole persona that was not who he was. And we, we came to call this guy uh, P. Willie, Persona Willie. And it was terrible. We hated him. 
And we started to work on this and we eventually broke it down um, and we found his fears around it. And we got to the place where he was able to stand in front of an audience as himself. And he was funny and he was loose and he was quirky and he was slightly awkward and it was amazing. And suddenly he figured out that that was okay. And the funny thing was that no one ever gave him crap for that. We, he, was, he was criticized when he was P. Willie before he came to me. When he showed up as himself authentically, people adored him. They adored him. And he's actually since been, uh, become the most sought after teacher at, at the clinic. Uh, and he started his own coaching practice uh, for leadership development. When you show up as authentically yourself, you can change the world. So the message really there is be yourself because you are enough. You absolutely and truly are. You are enough. So, so to wrap this up, I know we're, we're, we've got one minute here, Christy. So, so first of all, thank you, everyone. I hope you got some value out of this. Uh, and I wanted to invite you, considering we are all Roosevelt or Robert Morris alum, Christy is going to be sending out um, a, a cheat sheet on how to be better on video calls like this. But also, I am making myself available to have conversations with any of you and all of you. So she's going to be sending out a Calendly link. Um, so set up a time that works for you. And I would also invite you to visit my website. Um, and here, I'll type it in real fast here. But I have a business called KennethKendallCoaching.com. I work with folks who have fears or phobias around public speaking. Um, and sorry, I'm just... I sent that to Lisa instead of just everyone. Lisa, I would love to hear from you. <laughs> uh, KennethKendallCoaching.com. But I work with folks who have fears around public speaking uh, and also folks who are polished public speakers help get them to the next level. I would love to talk with you all about anything we've talked about today. So again, thank you all so very much. Get in contact and thank you for taking the time today, Christy. Thank you. Back to you. Oh, Kendall, thank you. Oh, Kenneth, I'm sorry. Um, thank you so much. This was absolutely amazing. And um, I think everyone here agrees with me. Um, I definitely, you know, have quite a few takeaways from some things I need to practice about my self talk to slowing down. I'm a fast talker. <laughs> so I have lots of notes on homework that I need to work on. I really appreciate you not only volunteering your time today um, over this hour, but also um, dedicating some time to everyone here today to have some individual time with them. Um, we really appreciate all that you've done um, to support our community. So, so thank you so much. And um, to all of you here today, I will be sending that email. Um, if you don't receive it today, you should receive it tomorrow morning. It just depends on how quickly we can get um, this recording up because I want to send you one email that includes everything from this recorded session to um, the link and um, document that Kenneth had mentioned. And then I also want to plug that next month, um, it's hard to believe that we're already going into September, um, but we have our annual American Dream Conference, um, September 14th to 17th. We have six uh, virtual sessions that are available to, to you. They're free to everyone, the public. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the link in the chat box. Um, you can also go to the Roosevelt uh, EDU website and just search American Dream and it'll pop up. And if you haven't already, you'll certainly probably be receiving communication about it too. Um, I want to share this not only because the conference is just a great opportunity to learn um, and to connect with others, um, but it will also replace some of our, our lifelong learning events for next month. We're just really focusing on the, the conference. We have so many amazing speakers joining us, so please tune in if you're free and available and interested. Um, and thank you all so much for joining today. Kenneth, I, can, I cannot thank you much for being here. We really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>